OK, we've got a Vectis question. And it's set up using I's, J's and K's. And, and if you've got any sense, you're going to put, turn these into column vectors. But be a little bit careful here. Um, this column vector, I plus 3J plus 5K, when you write that as a column vector, it's just 1, 3, 5. OK? It isn't 1I, 3J, 5K. We're doing away with the I's, J's and K's because the column vector notation shows us that that's in the X direction, that's in the Y direction, that's in the, the, the Z direction, which is all the I's, J's and K's are for. So um, no I's, J's and K's in this. So we need to show they intersect and find the coordinates of their point of intersection. So the whole point of an intersection is that the uh, equation for L1 gives the same point as the equation for L2. No extra clues are given this time. So you're going to take the uh, x bit of each equation and you're going to have something with lambdas in it. So they're going to be lambdas. Has got to match something from L2 with mu's in it. Okay, the x bit of L2. And you're going to do the same thing with y. Okay, and you could potentially do the same thing with z, though what I normally do is take the x and y equations and solve some tim simultaneous equations here to get a value for lambda and get a value for mu. I don't yet know whether the lines are going to intersect, but I know that if they do intersect, this lambda and this mu have to make it work. And then I just check the z equation to see if that comes true. So you've got examples like that in your notes. OK, and then we've got to show that L1 is perpendicular. So perpendicular is a fact about the directions of the line. So angle between the lines or whether the lines are perpendicular. What we're interested in is the directions. So part of the equation of each line tells you the direction. So um, to get this right, you need to choose two column vectors, which are not the complete equations of the lines, you need to pick out the direction vectors. And then to show they're perpendicular, the test for perpendicular vectors is in your notes again, but it's something to do with the dot product. Okay, the scalar product of these two vectors. So you're going to be scalar producting them, you're going to be getting an answer, and you're going to be interpreting that answer. You don't need for perpendicularity to use the full-blown cos theta recipe. I suppose you could if you were desperate, but you'd be spending more time and ink than it's worth for two marks.